In lesson three, the students learned about locating rational numbers on a number line. And I'm actually going to do the students' homework with them today, the problem set, because uh, the vibe from class was that they could use another lesson or more reteaching on it. So I'm going to go through the homework. So if you have your homework out, you can write on it as I'm going. The first question asks us to write the opposite of each number. Okay. And I'm only going to do the number line with the first one, okay? But 10 sevenths is the same as 1 and 3 sevenths as a mixed number. So that is between the integers positive 1, positive 2. I'm actually going to write a negative 1 and a negative 2. If I was going to plot 1 and 3 sevenths, I would have to break the number line with 6 lines to give me seven spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm gonna number them. One seventh, two sevenths, three sevenths, four sevenths, five sevenths, six sevenths. One would be seven sevenths. Then I'm gonna keep labeling them as improper fractions. This is eight sevenths, or one and one seventh. This is 9 sevenths, 1 and 2 sevenths, 10 sevenths, 11 sevenths, 12 sevenths, 13 sevenths, and 14 sevenths is the whole number 2. So when you're graphing 10 sevenths on a number line, it's right here. And this helps to see why we have opposites. 10 sevenths is 10 sevenths away from 0. So now to find its opposite, we have to find another number that's 10 sevenths away from 0 in the opposite direction. So I'm again going to cut this with 6 lines. Okay, this is negative 1 seventh, negative 2 sevenths, negative 3 sevenths, negative 4 sevenths, negative 5 sevenths, negative 6 sevenths, negative 7 sevenths, negative 8 sevenths, negative 9 sevenths, negative 10 sevenths, negative 11 sevenths, negative 12 sevenths, negative 13 sevenths, and negative 14 sevenths. So another number that is 10 sevenths away in the opposite direction is negative 10 sevenths. And you're probably thinking to, your, to yourself, why did she do all of that work um, to show us? what an opposite was, that is what an opposite looks like. It is very important that you understand opposites are equal distance away from zero on the number line, okay? There is an easier way. It's just the opposite sign. Negative five-thirds, its opposite would be positive five-thirds. They're both an equal distance away from zero. Three and 82 one-hundredths opposite is negative 3.82. And negative six and a half's opposite is positive six and a half. Okay, so let's go on and do the rest. Okay, number two says to choose an integer between zero and one, label it point A and its opposite point B in the number line. Write their values below the points. I'm going to challenge you not to pick the same number on your homework that I'm about to pick. I am going to pick uh, a non-integer integers of the counting numbers, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I am going to pick 7 eighths. I know that if I want eighths, I have to make 7 lines, and I'm going to label them 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths is right here. Now I'm going to label that point A, okay, and I'm going to label that 7 eighths of a way of a distance away from 0. Now I'm going to find 7 eighths away from 0 in the opposite direction, and that will be point B. Negative 1 eighth, negative 2 eighths, negative 3 eighths, negative 4 eighths, negative 5 eighths, negative 6 eighths, negative 7 eighths. Pick a different number than me. Don't pick 7 eighths. Pick something else. Okay. Choose a value for point P that is between negative 6 and negative 7. Well, I'm going to switch it up from fractions. I'm going to use decimals. 
How about negative 6.25? Okay. What is the opposite of P? It's going to be positive 6.25. Describe points P, P's location on the number line in relation to 0. It is 6.25 units to the left of zero on a horizontal number line. Find the opposite of the opposite of point P. Point P, the opposite of the opposite. This is point P. The opposite of that is negative 6.25. And the opposite of that is back to positive 6.25. So the opposite of the opposite is always the first number that you start with. Okay, let's keep going down. Locate and label each point on the number line. Okay, is that my number line? I wonder if I can move that guy. I'm going to move it up here so you guys can see the work that I'm doing on one screen. Okay. Jill lives one block north of the pizza shop. Okay, Jeanette's house is one third block past Jill's house. Jeffrey and Olivia are in the park four thirds block south of the pizza shop. Janet's jazzy jewelry shop is located halfway between the pizza shop and the park. Whoa, okay, that's a lot. But I have a couple of things that can help me out, okay? Jill's is one block north of the pizza shop. So I'm going to start by labeling it like this. And I might have to change it, okay? Jeanette's house is one-third block past Jill's house. And let's see. Okay, I'm trying to figure out a starting point here. <laughs> Jill lives one block north of the pizza shop. I'm going to make zero the pizza shop. So if Jill lives one block north of the pizza shop, this would be Jill's house. Jeanette's house is one third block past Jill's house. So I'm actually going to extend my number line. And please feel free to do it. And I'm going to cut it into three sections. One third, two thirds, this would be the number two. And because I cut that into thirds, I'm actually going to cut this into thirds too. One third, two thirds. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this into thirds. Negative one third, negative two thirds, and one. Okay. And I'll see if I need to, um, I need to go any further down as I work through the word problem. So Jill lives one block north of the pizza shop. Jeanette lives one third of a block past. Jill's house. So this is going to be Jeanette's. Okay. Jeffrey and Olivia are in the park four-thirds blocks south of the pizza shop. So four-thirds, negative four-thirds is the same as negative one and one-fourth because three fits into four one whole time and there's one left out of, over out of four. So I'm going to have to have a negative two. And also make two lines, negative one, negative one and one third, negative one <clears throat> and two thirds, okay? So Jeffrey and Olivia's house is going to be at negative one and one third. I made a mistake in my math here. I'm a, I apologize. Three fits into four one time, and there is one left over out of three, Mrs. Creamer. Sorry about that. Even teachers make mistakes. Okay, I'm glad I caught it. And then Janet's Jazzy Jewelry Shop is located halfway between the pizza shop and the park. Okay, this is the park. So to calculate halfway through, I'm actually going to highlight. This is one, two, three, four spaces. So halfway between would be right here. One, two, one, two. And that's at negative two-thirds. And that's the jazzy jewelry, Janet's jazzy jewelry shop. OK, 
Okay, and that was, that was a pretty complicated problem. So if you got it, I, um, I'm exci excited for you. Negative two-thirds represents the location of Janet's Jazzy Jewelry Shop. And this is like a brief synopsis of what we were trying to accomplish in lesson three, ordering rational numbers on the number line.